We came to the Google Fit Apple Health app comparison thinking we were going to see two pretty similar apps because they were both the built-in health app on the different OSs, iOS and Android. But what we found was something much more interesting about how these two different companies, Apple and Google, operate. The three main things we'll be discussing are gamification, integration, and data collection, which both these apps do extremely differently. Yeah. So let's just get started with the home screens. Like right off the bat, take a look at both of them because I think it's critical to see them side by side to see just how different these two apps are. And the first thing you can see is on Google Fit, you actually have these kind of rings, there's goals. It's really much more goal oriented. You have streaks, you have multiple day streaks, and it actually lets you know when you've achieved a goal. So you actually get a little notification saying, hey, hooray, <laughs> you've done your steps for the day, which is really great. I actually do use it. I'm embarrassed to say, like I get that little dopamine hit when it says, hey, you walked your 7,500 steps, which is the number of steps that I have uh, today. And it feels great. Other interesting things, thing about this kind of whole thing. It's not just gamification, there's also kind of a social aspect to it where it actually tells you what the general health status of mm. the world is. They built a relationship with the World Health Organization uh, to develop this thing called heart points. And those heart points are integrated in the app. They kind of, you know, to me are pretty meaningless. I've never actually looked at heart points and been right. like, okay, this is the most important thing. It's like abstraction is never really that great a thing, right? We discussed no. that in the Duolingo Babel episode. Totally where like experience points yeah, yeah. for language learning. So what does that even really mean? <laughs> totally, but it's with the World Health Organization, so it must be legit. Must you know, it's interesting, like, you know, who knows what your relationship with the World Health Organization is, but to have a general governing body be your reference point is a pretty strong statement in right. general for an application, whether it's World Health Organization, United Nations, whatever it is, uh, they really kind of use that to help guide people's health levels. Right, whereas looking at the Apple Health app here, Really, you can see that you have this favorites up front, which if you scroll down on the Google Health app, uh, sorry, up, that is a screen set by Google, yeah. right? Whereas here, these favorites, you can choose what you want. So you can click on edit up there, and then you can see I've chosen these three things. Those are the three things that I want to look at regularly when I check my Apple Health app. And then scrolling down, there's some highlights or insights kind of yeah. based on what you've done, but there is no averages, no goals, none of that like gamified stuff that we saw on the, on the uh, yeah, you're Google compared things. directly to yourself. Right, you can read here. On average, last week's step count was lower than two weeks ago. That's my step count. Yeah. Right? From the home screens, I think that's the first thing we see that's like one of them is, I'm not going to say trying to compete with like Strava or whatever, but yeah. clearly trying to be the app that you go to for fitness. It wants you to actually use it. To use it. Get involved, add information. Yeah. Whereas this is like more, and actually look at the header here. Summary. Yeah. You know, it's just a summary of all the data it's collected from other apps and, you know, uh, from its uh, the basic step counter. Whereas it. here they even actually make it very easy to just add information, add data. And you know, we actually tell our clients and sometimes our students this kind of thing where it's like, what you show on the screen communicates a lot about what you're expecting the user on the other end to do. Totally. By putting a plus button front and center, you're expecting users to add data manually, probably regularly. Yeah, exactly. Next interesting thing to look at is the steps here. So let's jump into the steps. Um, pretty basic, not a whole lot going on on the mm -hmm. Google side. We have just the steps from Sunday and Monday to show two days of the week, I guess, where I was walking last. There's the kind of month overview, which is a little bit more interesting in terms of how they display the data. That's really it. Not a whole lot of information there. Yeah, it's quite dry. And I think, yeah. this, you know, whereas on the summary screen on the Apple Health app, it was pretty basic and you had your fancy rings. Yeah. I think this is where Apple Health suddenly, like it becomes a little bit more interesting, right? So on the Apple Health side, you know, this is a daily. We're going to monthly here uh, and we can see you know, different days, step count, the highlights that we saw on the home screen. But, and I think this is critical, is this. Yeah. And this communicates volumes about the relationship Apple and Apple Health has with the developers on the Apple ecosystem. Yeah. And I mean, what that is, just to be clear, is Apple has chosen to integrate with a variety of other apps that do the specific thing within the data point we're looking at. So in this case, it's steps. You have, uh, I haven't heard these ones. View Ranger, yeah. there's like uh, Run Tracker. But I think, you know, it's not just that they integrate, but they're sending you to the app so you can download it. Not necessarily capture the data themselves directly, at least through Apple Health app. Yeah. 
And I, I think that's really awesome. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, it's that's cool for the developers. <laughs> yeah, totally. You know, in, in this instance, like it's not just walking, but other things as well throughout the variety of different stats that they yeah, collect so that they push. Go to browse, yeah. we go to heart, for example, blood pressure. And then, you know, I don't have <laughs> any data here, but if you go, you have blood pressure apps. Yeah. Right. And so we can see that if you try and do the same on yours. Let's see here. Where could we go? I, I don't think uh, there's a good place where we can actually find something. Oh, we can add blood pressure here. Right. Uh, but it's done manually. Right. You know, everything is done inside of the Google right. Fit apps, whereas there's really a lot more flexibility around the options within the Apple Fit. I think it's important to mention, though, that Google Fit does integrate with other apps. Yes. It it's just not very doesn't do it well. Robust. Yeah. If you look yeah. online, a lot of the complaints have to do with its ability to integrate with a variety of other applications. Yeah. So I mean, what one of the interesting points is okay, you know, Apple is giving you all of these options related to health. You know, you have a variety of other apps, whereas Google is really trying to get all the information directly from you. And they've done that in, in a variety of different ways. You know, Google's a software company. So a lot of their, you know, R&D goes into software, AI technology, and you can even see how this stuff starts to manifest in the actual application mm -hmm. itself, which is really interesting. I mean, I actually hadn't explored this stuff prior much, but you have a couple different areas where you can do interesting things. Like for example, check your heart rate. So, cool. okay, let's get started with check your heart rate. Uh, and the phone itself is the thing that actually measures your heart rate. Oh. Okay. with your phone's camera using AI technology. So let's go next. You put your finger and it actually takes, I think you were explaining. Yeah, it's like takes pictures basically and sees the difference in the color of your skin. Yeah. And it knows how much blood is passing through your Which <laughs> is insane, you know, like Google is investing in the software so that it can do things like this, which is really impressive. Whereas on the Apple side. Right, Apple's a hardware company. Yeah. And Apple collects its data primarily through the Apple Watch right now for fitness. With each Apple Watch, they add a new sensor. As a result, they're not flexing too much with AI and camera technology here, right? No. Instead, they're sort of just Collecting the data in Apple Health, they have another app, yeah. Apple Fitness, yeah. which is the direct companion app of the Apple Watch. And in that, they collect a lot of other stuff. I guess because of the fact that they make their money through hardware, they're happy to offload software a little bit onto some other people, you know, download this app, it doesn't matter. Totally. The apps also have Apple Watch apps. Right? Yes, exactly. Um, They'll find a way to collect the data either way for both people, you know? It's just a question of what you're more comfortable with or mm -hmm. what works better for you. And, and I think for people who are interested in like getting into UX, one thing that's really, you know, been interesting to observe is how, yes, you need to respond to your users. Yes, you need to do the best possible job as a designer to make something intuitive and interesting. But the business model of the person hiring you, of the company you work at, and dictates a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's what we're seeing is business model just, you know, even more than, than users can dictate the right. experience. And in this case, you know, these are apps that are pre-installed. You might be stuck with them based on the OS that you have. And so making the decision isn't so easy. No. Right. So I think it's important to like take a deep look if you're interested in these applications in health, in uh, data to dive in and see which one works best for you in that sense. That's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you learned something you were interesting, let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, subscribe to our channel to learn more about the next episode and keep learning about UX and apps.